episode of Questions from the Field. Uh, what we've noticed is as we're out there uh, serving buildings, ser serving clientele, you know, a lot of people are getting arc flash studies done. We'll do a lot of arc flash studies. Other companies do arc flash studies. Uh, we find that a lot of times people don't know what to do after a report has been issued. So today what we're doing is we're sitting here and we want to go over, if you've had an arc flash study done, you know, what are components that you really should be aware of in the report that might cause you to do some further action. So I've got Chris and Edson here, part of SI testing. And, you know, Chris, you're out there, you do a lot of arc flash studies. Uh, when you finish a study, you go over the report with the customer. Uh, what, is, what is one typical thing that you like to point out in the report? Uh, it really comes down to coordination. Uh, the arc flash incident energy is a direct result of uh, how quickly a protective device can extinguish that fault. So uh, when we do the study and coordinate uh, those protective devices, it's important that after that's been done that we go in, adjust those settings, and actually test those protective devices at those current settings to validate uh, that is going to produce that amount of energy at that particular unit. Okay, so it doesn't matter who does the study. So if, if they have a company coming in doing maintenance, one of the questions they should ask if a study's been done is they should grab the yeah, arc flash report. the first things that, yeah, you should bring up is, you know, has that been done? Uh, even doing basic servicing, uh, even on an infrared basis. Uh, today's technology uh, they have a lot of uh, GE in particular has a reduced energy let through product that uh, when somebody's working on a particular circuit, they can actually adjust settings to limit the amount of energy being released if there were to be a fault. And again, things like that need to be tested uh, and implemented uh, if uh, installed in the year. Okay. So one of the components is uh, the coordination. So take the report adjust the settings, make sure they test at that value, uh, and that'll validate, this, validate the setting, but also validate the study that goes on there. Right, and that also goes with fuses. Uh, if an RK5 fuse versus an RK1 fuse is installed, that is going to have a dramatically different uh, reaction to a short uh, or a fault uh, on the load side of that fuse that is going to limit uh, the amount of available fault current to that that short uh, that's important to pay attention to and when fuses inevitably uh, you know, blow and you need to replace them, you got to replace them with the appropriate fuse to match that. Okay. Let's talk about what else is, I mean, you're an electrical engineer, you're the one putting the studies together. What are some other things that you would point out in the study? Uh, one of the major things is uh, the short circuit uh, duty and how every piece of equipment in the system is rated in comparison to that. Um, Short circuit begins uh, with the available fault current that the utility makes available for you to use. Uh, how much short circuit from that you experience is all based on your load and how much load is used uh, during uh, peak hours, uh, off peak hours. It's always going to be a percentage of that. But um, every piece of equipment has to be capable of handling uh, the maximum that the utility company is going to contribute. Uh, one of the most important things is make sure that every piece of equipment is able to do its job. And it can do its job as long as it's rated for that particular short circuit. Uh, within that gap, uh, it'll perform as it's supposed to as long as it's been tested. Okay. So I know one of the things that we notice a lot of time in the reports, you might have a breaker that's rated for 10 or 14K AIC, but the main feeding it might deliver two, three times at 20,000, 25, 30,000 mm -hmm. that's on there. Why is that such a concern? Uh, you know, because it's, it's, we call it the red lettering in yeah. the report. Um, and most people don't even understand what that's about. So why is that important? Uh, well, the manufactured companies for, uh, let's say, panels or uh, protective devices, they actually test different levels of uh, short circuit for that particular equipment. Uh, they decide at what a value that equipment still can basically perform as it's supposed to. Uh, once the, the design engineer before the facility is, is, is built basically has to figure out how much uh, available fault current the utility company is going to make available to the facility, such as a transformer and whatnot. And uh, based on that, they're supposed to design the equipment to be able to handle that. So 
if um, the basically the short circuit rating for uh, a panel is not rated properly, um, you can see a number of things. It, it's basically not guaranteed that it's going to perform. Um, it could explode. It could uh, burn out. Uh, there's no guarantee, and that's basically where it comes in for. I remember one of the customers, we were going through that report with them, and we were explaining to him about the panel. He had 10K rated breakers, and I think it was delivering like 30 or 33K. And he started going through the scenario of like, you know, breakers could, you know, blow up, uh, could not trip, you could take fuses out, all these different things. And it was like that aha moment, like, that's why that stuff's been going on all these years. I never knew it was short circuit rating, so it could be a safety issue but also could affect the coordination where the breaker is supposed to trip something else might happen yeah or you could have some physical damage exactly. that's in there uh, right. one of the key things is that just because nothing's happened in 20 30 years uh, perhaps the equipment hasn't seen any current of that level that surpasses the rating uh, so just because it hadn't it's been working in the past doesn't mean that it could potentially work during a, a short circuit so it, it's something that the, the study actually looks at it compares how much calculates how much current can potentially go through that piece of equipment and it compares it to the rating and then uh, we uh, provide an evaluation report of the percentage whether how close it gets to that rating or whether it's gone over that rating. So if it's at 100%, less than 100%, exceeds 100% exactly. on there. Okay. Uh, and lastly, um, you know, we talk about, you know, there's all these different components, but something else the customer should be aware about is some things of the arc flash is a very high value. So what are, what are some of the things that we notice about that? Uh, when we say there, you know, you might have something that's danger, do not open. Yeah, the closer you get to uh, the utility transformer, the higher the incident energy typically is. And that's because of the amount of energy that's being introduced uh, to that piece of equipment and how quickly it can extinguish it. So when that occurs, when you get to a level uh, to where you see more of a danger label versus a warning label. Uh, some of the options that you have are one, uh, installing a more current limiting fuse that may be protecting uh, that main board uh, that can limit the amount of energy and hopefully get you to a point where you can actually open the panel covers to do different inspections. Uh, if not, uh, at that point, then you can look at installing uh, infrared windows. Uh, there are special windows that they make that don't that prevent you from opening uh, the the board and allow you to inspect it without really opening it. Uh, not so much prevention, uh, but with an infrared camera to look for any kind of heat signatures that would be problematic. Okay. All right. So these are typical things that you should be aware of when you get your report. If someone hasn't walked you through it. Um, you know, really the three things you want to look at is, did anything fail in short circuit? Were any of my uh, settings need to be changed and adjusted? And to make sure I implement that in my next round of uh, maintenance testing and ground fault testing. And the third thing is dealing with uh, mitigation. You might have some high values that need to be mitigated or short circuit wise. And we're going to bring that up in our next episode. But if you've had no one walk through you with the report, feel free to reach out to us. We gladly go through it and explain it to you so you understand what issues you need to deal with and what options are you can at least budget for and prepare for in the near future.